trapping was a major economic enterprise in Alaska in the late 1800s and early 1900s. As time went on, trapping provided winter work for many Alaskans who fished, mined, or logged, or who had no other source of cash. Today, trapping remains a unique and important part of many Alaskans' lifestyle. But trapping is more complicated than it used to be. Today's trapper must be able to get along with people who don't trap or who may not like trapping. Trappers must also get along with pet owners and with a variety of landowners. The trapper still has to look out for the welfare of fur bearers by not over trapping an area and by trapping fur bearers as humanely as possible. The modern trapper still needs a lot of old fashioned common sense. Foxes, coyotes, and wolves are all canids or members of the dog family. All canids have excellent hearing, a great sense of smell, and are very smart. That's a combination which makes them harder to catch than other fur bearers. Successful canid trappers must avoid contaminating traps, snares, and bait materials with human scent or other smells which the animals associate with humans. They must also learn how a fox, coyote, or wolf acts. Alaska has two species of foxes, the arctic or white fox and the red fox. Red foxes occur in three color phases, red, cross, and silver. We will talk mainly about red fox, but much of the information applies to the arctic fox as well. Red foxes are solitary animals throughout much of the trapping season, but pair up during breeding season. Pups are on their own by early fall. Foxes hunt small birds, mice, snowshoe hares, ducks and geese, ptarmigan, and grouse. They also feed on the scraps of big game left by bears and wolves. Foxes prefer open habitats and thrive in the marshes and brushland of interior Alaska. They also like food-rich seashores. In mountains, foxes spend much time hunting areas above tree line. Foxes often travel on well-packed trails, which makes them easy to catch with traps and snares. Fox numbers rise and fall in response to changes in their prey populations. A good fox trapper in prime habitat can earn a substantial portion of his or her trapping income from this valuable fur bearer when fox numbers are high. Coyotes are uncommon in most parts of Alaska but are increasing their range in the state. They are most common on the Kenai Peninsula. Like foxes, coyotes prefer open habitats where their keen eyesight and hearing helps them catch mice, hares, and birds. Coyotes have also been observed hunting the young of prey up to the size of doll sheep. And, like foxes, coyotes take full advantage of scavenging kills made by bears and wolves. Coyotes may be found in small family groups from March through late fall, but they are mainly solitary animals. Most coyotes are taken by trappers trying to catch foxes and wolves. Wolves live throughout most of Alaska, from the temperate rainforest of southeastern to the vast northern Arctic coastal plain. Wolves mainly hunt large animals such as black-tailed deer, caribou, sheep, and moose. Beavers and other small animals are taken when the chance arises or when big game is scarce. Wolves are such good hunters that they can survive and raise pups long after the main food animals have become scarce. Hunting by wolves may keep deer, moose, sheep, or caribou at very low numbers in an area. Wolf trapping can be a part of an important game management technique used to increase big game populations. Healthy big game populations can support more wolves and larger annual wolf harvests. The wolf is probably the most difficult of all Alaska fur bearers to trap. Most wolves are in packs which hold large territories. Wolf packs can contain 20 or more wolves, but about 10% of the wolves are solitary and live between pack territories. Wolf dens and rendezvous sites or meeting places are special attractions. Rendezvous sites can include urinating spots like stumps or rocks, or play areas. Wolf packs use traditional travel routes. Once a kill is made, wolves may come back to the site even weeks later. Wolves commonly weigh more than 100 pounds and are extremely strong. Strong, well-constructed traps and snares must be used for efficient and humane wolf trapping. Wolf trapping alone doesn't usually provide adequate trap line income but the regular harvest of a few wolves a year can add substantially to the trap line yield and a trapper's sense of accomplishment. Preparing for trapping canids starts well before fox, coyote, and wolf trapping seasons. 
Trapping supplies can be purchased at stores or ordered from trapping supply houses and some fur buyers which advertise in regional and national trapping magazines. Trap and snare selection is the first step. For red foxes and coyotes, number three and four traps are recommended. These traps work even when covered by snow. Number one and two snares are used for fox. For wolves, hefty number four, four and a half, 14, and 114 new house or comparable traps are needed along with number three and four snares. Traps and snares should be inspected to be sure they will work well. The next step is to make necessary changes. Extra chain should be added to traps so that the drag or tie off can be placed well away from the set. Strong connectors or swivels should be used. The final step is to boil traps and snares to remove foreign odors. New snares or traps should be degreased before boiling by baking in a hot oven, or they may be boiled twice. Old traps or snares need only one boiling. Gather traps in groups of six and coil snares singly before boiling. Boil the traps and snares in water with logwood crystals, alder bark, or twigs. Pour or float all of the scum off the water before removing traps from the barrel. Traps and snares should be hung from trees or log racks to air before the trapping season. If you have an established trap line, leave your wolf traps and snares in the woods over the summer. This keeps scent contamination to a minimum and makes for a more odorless set the next winter. If traps and snares must be brought home, hang them well away from areas where they could pick up smells like oil, fish, or smoke. Otherwise, traps and snares must be boiled before they are used again. When trapping, carry your traps, snares, wire, and wax paper trap covers in a plastic bag separate from baits and scents. Keep all trapping gear away from gasoline, oil, chainsaws, and the snow machine engine. Separate boxes, trapping baskets, or bags should be used to avoid contaminating trapping gear with foreign odors. Before the trapping season, canid trappers should obtain bait material. The best bait is hides, bones, and organs of legally taken big game such as moose and caribou. Whole skinned carcasses of black and grizzly bears are also good. Large bait chunks should be separated with a clean axe. Chainsaws can contaminate bait with the scent of oil. Bait should be allowed to taint until stinky and then stored frozen where it is safe from dogs. A wire enclosure works well for storing bait as does burying bait underground. If commercially prepared gland lures, suspicion removers, and chunk baits are to be used, they should be ordered from reputable lure makers well before the trapping season. Using urine is only recommended when you've taken it from animals you've trapped and you know it's fresh. A few dozen pair of warm cotton gloves should be purchased. Clean, dry gloves are essential for making scent-free canid sets. Rolls of waxed paper cut in half with an oil-free hacksaw will also be needed for covering traps. A trail axe or small camp saw will be used for cutting drags of birch, aspen, or poplar. Wire and pliers are needed for tying traps to trees or to drags. A clean pair of snow pants and boots should be reserved for canid trapping. Use clean rubber bottom boots instead of mucklucks to minimize human or foreign odors near sets. The trail set, or blind trail set, is one of the most effective sets for taking canids in Alaska. This set requires no bait or lure. Instead, the trail set allows the trapper to take advantage of the habit of canids to run on a packed trail. Large traps, number four or larger, are recommended especially for wolves. Wolves commonly travel in packs with a wary large adult usually leading the pack. Trail sets must be odor free, neatly made, and strong enough to hold a powerful animal. First, select a straight section of trail where foxes, coyotes, or wolves have run in the past and are likely to run again. Canids travel faster and with less caution when they can see for a long way down the trail. Wolves are more likely to hit sets on rivers and wide open trails than on twisting trails through dense woods. Make mental or written notes on where foxes, coyotes, and wolves have run in the past they are likely to run the same trails again in the future. The trail set can be made anywhere out of the wind and out of the path of squirrels and snowshoe hares. On lakes and wide rivers, lay your trail against a windbreak of trees or shrubs on the upwind bank. This will protect trail sets from blowing free of snow or from drifting under. Stop along the trail well before you reach the area you want to set. 
take long steps into the woods and cut a green log drag with a clean axe. Handle it only with clean, dry gloves. If you are trapping wolves, drags should be six to seven feet long and at least four to six inches through the butt. Next, cut a notch all the way around the log drag slightly toward the heavy end from the middle. This is where the extended trap chain will be wrapped around and securely wired. Carry the drag back to the trail and place it in the sled where it will stay clean and free from contamination by gasoline or bait. Using clean gloves, set the trap and move along the trail to the set location. The set can be made either by walking off your pack trail and setting from the downwind side of the trail, or by driving beyond the set location and making the set while standing on the back of your sled. If you stand alongside the trail, stand in one place to avoid disturbing the set area. Bury the drag on the downwind side of your trail as far off the trail as the extended chain will allow. Next, bed the trap in the trail so that the completed set will be slightly below the level of the pack trail. Cover the whole trap with a sheet of clean waxed paper and no more than an eighth of an inch of fluffy snow. Too much snow will form a crust and prevent the trap from working. Thin twigs should then be stuck into the trail against the trap jaws. These are guide sticks. Next, a fork stick should be stuck into the snow about 10 to 12 inches ahead of the trap pan and directly in line with it for wolves. This is the stepping stick. For foxes, the stepping stick should be only eight inches from the trap pan. These will help pinpoint foot placement onto the trap pan. The next time you run the line, make a loop trail around the set on your main trail, preferably through brush so animals will continue traveling the main trail. The most important things to remember when making trail sets are, wear clean dry gloves when handling trapping gear and drags. Use different gloves when riding your snow machine. Use only clean traps, wire, drags, and trap covers. Disturb the area as little as possible when making the set. The track set is similar to the trail set, except that the trap is set directly into a footprint already made by the target animal. Foxes, coyotes, and wolves commonly use the same trails repeatedly and will often step in their own tracks even weeks after their first trail is made. Because the animal's own track is set, there's no need for guide or stepping sticks, and smaller traps may be used. In an area with a good incoming wolf trail that does not have enough brush for a good snare location, a trap should be used. Choose a well-defined wolf track in the trail, well away from the kill site. Bed the trap on a thin layer of hair taken from the kill.
bed the trap securely and cover with more hair, sprinkling additional hair several feet in each direction along the trail. Just as much care must be taken that the trap and drag are free of human odor and that clean dry gloves are used to make the set. Be sure to approach the animal's trail from the side and don't step in the animal's trail. The trail set and the track set can both be used in a wide variety of situations. While the basics remain the same, the uses for these sets are only limited by the trapper's cleverness. Most trappers know that foxes are attracted to muskrat push-ups on frozen lakes. Telltale fox tracks on a snow-covered lake will show the trapper which push-ups foxes find most attractive and visit regularly. Foxes often approach only one side of a push-up and follow the same tracks each time. After cutting a log drag and securing the lengthened trap chain to the drag, approach the push-up on the opposite side from where the fox has been approaching. Dig a small hole into the side of the push-up. Bed the trap with one jaw right against the edge of the hole. If bait is used in the hole, a few drops of fox gland lure above the hole completes the set. An extra touch can be made by placing a fresh fox scat just beyond the hole. The scat adds both scent and a visual appeal to the push-up set. Areas disturbed by being sloppy will often make foxes, coyotes, and wolves more cautious. Cut drags and actually set your traps away from the immediate set to keep the area neat. One of the most surefire sets for wolves in Alaska can be made near a wolf-killed moose or caribou. Wolves commonly return to their old kills. When a wolf pack approaches a kill site, the pack generally splits up. This increases the trapper's chances of taking a young, less cautious wolf. Both traps and snares can be used effectively near wolf kills. Look for signs of a wolf-killed moose or caribou site. You might see both old and fresh wolf tracks going in both directions wolf trails leading off your trail, or blood, bones, or hair on the trail. Ravens, gray jays, magpies, wolverine tracks with wolf tracks, or tracked up areas on rivers or lakes can also be indications. You'll notice that where a pack of wolves has made a kill, there will be other smaller trails leading away from the kill to beds, much like the spokes on a wheel. Use three double X or larger snares. Set every small trail leading away from the kill itself. When placing snares, don't stand in the wolf trails, but off to the side. Take large steps as you move around the kill setting the snares. Place the snares well away from the kill site on incoming wolf trails. After all the small trails from the kill are set, additional snares may be placed in obvious holes in brush or among trees. Wolves may run through these holes if one of their members is caught in a snare or trap. Such sets near moose or caribou kills often catch more than one wolf. Wolf snares can be set with a hoop up to about 18 inches in diameter. The bottom of the hoop should be about knee high regardless of hoop size. It's often necessary to hook two number three double X snares together using the tree locks to reach a secure tree. Snares should be attached as high as possible to sturdy trees at least four to five inches thick at the butt. If only small trees or brush are available, attach the snare close to the ground so the wolf cannot escape by chewing down the tree or brush. Use very light, clean wire to suspend the snare at the correct height. Make sure that the wire hangers won't prevent the snare from closing easily and smoothly. Make sure that the limbs you suspend the snare from won't sag under a load of snow and that winds won't cause the snare hoops to drop from their wire hangers easily. The use of traps for taking wolves near kill sites is not recommended. Traps set right near the kill are very likely to catch feeding ravens or gray jays. Also, traps set in nearby wolf trails may well take marten or fox. If birds or small fur bearers are trapped near the kill, wolves become cautious and may not approach the kill afterwards. 
it's usually possible to catch marten, foxes, coyotes, or wolverines well away from the kill site to avoid disturbing the wolf set. A properly made wolf kill set using snares could last all season. Even when soft snow on the ground reaches the bottoms of the snares, the snares can still take wolves. As a final touch, consider making trail sets with large traps on your snow machine trail after leaving the kill site. Make your sets a quarter mile or so down the trail away from the direction you expect the wolves to come. After one or two pack members become snared, the remaining pack members often regroup and run down the trail away from the kill. Trail sets can help the trapper to take one or more additional wolves from the pack. For most trappers, locating a wolf-killed moose or caribou carcass near your trap line may be a rare occurrence. But if beaver and bear carcasses, bones, guts, and hides from legal big game kills are saved from the hunting season, Wolf trappers can make an effective bait set which looks like a natural kill site. Bait material to be used for wolves should be kept clean and protected from dogs until it's needed. The best location for a baited snare set is in an area where wolves have traveled in the past. Place the main bait on the upwind side of your trail and then throw a few chunks of bait alongside your trail to catch the wolves attention. Try to pick a bait location with thick black spruce or brush to allow the use of snares. Other than that, make the large bait set similar to the way you would set a natural kill. Key points to remember when making snare sets near natural wolf kills and large bait sets are use only clean dry gloves to hang snares, changing gloves as often as necessary. When the palms of your gloves get moist, change them. Wash used gloves and reuse them later. Avoid walking or stepping in established wolf trails when hanging snares. Hang your snares with hoops up to 18 inches in diameter with the bottom of the hoops knee high. Hoop size should fit the opening you are setting. Support your snares with clean fine wire, thread, or other material which keeps snares in place so that snow and wind will not knock your snares down. Finally, avoid setting traps close to the kill or bait to avoid ruining the set by catching birds or smaller fur bearers. Try to keep trap sets in wolf trails at least 75 feet or more from the kill. Some wolf packs may hit a section of the trap line regularly, say every two weeks. Other packs may hit a line only a couple of times a winter. Regularity indicates your line may be in the core of a pack's territory and your trapping intensity should be greater with many trail sets. Infrequent use of an area by wolves may make using large baited snare sets more efficient. Look at a possible set location well before plunging into it. Try to think like the animal you're trying to catch. How will a fox, coyote, or wolf approach the set? Then, plan how to make the set. Experience is the best teacher here. Learn through your mistakes. Fox traps can become contaminated with foreign odors after being reset two or three times. After any catch, or after the traps are contaminated with other odors, fox traps can be rotated to link sets where odor contamination isn't as important. Some clean fox, coyote, and wolf traps should be saved for use later in the season. Pay attention to animal tracks, both when fresh and as the same tracks get older and snowed over. With practice, you can even tell what made old snow-covered tracks by the length of the stride and the pattern. Successful trapping of Alaskan canids is not due to luck or accident. It involves careful pre-season preparation, a basic knowledge of fox, coyote, and wolf behavior and senses, and attention to detail and cleanliness when making the different kinds of basic sets. Successful fox, coyote, and wolf trapping in Alaska is well worth the extra effort required. When such pelts are cared for correctly, their quality is among the best in the world. A few foxes, coyotes, or wolves each year can add a lot to the annual yield of your trap lines. In addition, you can be helping manage fur bearers and big game in your area.